Um, um, quite a lot of people here might already uh, have heard this from me, but um, perhaps uh, amongst the members of the audience there might be uh, people who are new to my lectures. So I would like to emphasize this point about how we should understand uh, compassion in the right way as, uh, in, in, in the Buddhist context. Um, generally speaking, in the Buddhist tradition, um, compassion and loving kindness are seen as, in some sense, two, two sides of the same thing. Uh, compassion is said to be that um, uh, empathetic wish uh, that wishes or that aspires to see the object of compassion as um, uh, free from the suffering. And loving kindness is that aspiration that wishes others to enjoy happiness. So in some sense, they are looking at the same object from two sides. So when we talk about love and compassion here, uh, we should not uh, mistake this with um, the kind of ordinary um, sensations of uh, compassion or, or, or love that we normally understand in conventional language. For example, like uh, we have experiences of sense of closeness towards uh, people who are dear to us. Um, we, have, we, we feel a sense of uh, uh, compassion, empathy, and also we have strong love towards these people. But in many of these cases, the love and compassion that you have towards uh, such people are grounded in certain self-regarding or self-referential self considerations. Considerations such as such and such a person is my friend or such and such a person is my spouse or my child or so on and so forth. And so what is happening here is that in that kind of uh, a loving emotion, the emotion of love or compassion, although well, it may be uh, strong, but it is in some sense tinged with attachment. And uh, because there is a self-regarding consideration involved in it, and once there is attachment, there is also the potential for anger and hatred to uh, arise out of it. Because attachment and anger, or attachment and hate, uh, hatred, they go really hand in hand. For example, like if one has uh, one's compassion towards someone is biased and is based uh, and is tinged with attachment, and that kind of compassion can due to some uh, incidents, can easily turn into the opposite, hatred. So instead of, then instead of wishing that person to be happy, you may in fact, there is a possibility, you may in fact wish that person to be miserable. So where is the true compassion and love that we are talking about in the context of training of the mind here is a compassion that is based upon the simple recognition, the basic fact that others just like myself naturally aspire to be happy and overcome suffering. Others, just like myself, had the natural right to fulfill that basic aspiration. And on that simple recognition of this basic fact, when you develop empathy towards that person, then that kind of compassion is universal. There is no element of uh, prejudice. There is no element of uh, discrimination. And that is, in principle, extendable to all sentient beings, so long as that, that living being is a living being. Are capable of experiencing pain and happiness. Oh, yeah. So, uh, 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 in a any uh Serungaman of the Dracha Chedu Semele but Dracha Sigri Saba. Chedu in a Sabatone, Chavotorgua, Chavosogua. Then you down you say you te Yanji Tata uh Chi Mitumbe uh Charles Daddy or the Yango Gen Tamuji and Yan to you in Guru Sabatone, Yan Tan Shadan de Melosoya, Tan Sid de Melosoya. Those Cheni detach. Sun any shine any pa casuri the water than to do in ten you lot shine chang. So because of this um, basic point, the essential feature of true compassion being universal and not discriminatory, because of this fact, in the procedure for training the mind towards cultivating compassion, 
in the Buddhist tradition, an emphasis is placed to first cultivate a thought of even-mindedness or equanimity towards all sentient beings, which may uh, involve, in fact, deliberately uh, kind of evening out your uh, thoughts and emotions towards all the other sentient beings to the extent that you know, one, one would reflect upon the fact that such and such a person may be my friend, my relatives, and so on and so forth in this life at this point, but such and such person may have been, from a Buddhist point of view, one's worst enemies in the past lives and so on. Similarly, you, know, you uh, direct your attention, toward, focus towards uh, people whom you consider enemies, and then you um, uh, tackle with that uh, kind of uh, emotion that you have towards that person, thinking that although this person, this, an, this or that person, may be uh, negative towards me, uh, is, is my enemy, but such and such a person could have been my best friend in my past life, could have been my uh, rel related to me, and so on. So through that way, by reflecting upon the kind of the fluctuating nature of one's relationship with others, and also the potential that exists in all of, uh, all sentient beings to be friends and enemies, you even you develop this even-mindedness or equanimity. So in a in a sense, in the practice of uh, developing or cultivating this equanimity, there is a form of detachment involved. And but here it is important to understand that sometimes when people hear the Buddhist practice of detachment, they think that what Buddhism is advocating is a form of indifference, a state of in cultivating a state of indifference towards all. That is, however, not the case. But what is being done here is to first cultivate a form of detachment so that in a way one could say the sting is taken out from your discriminatory emotions towards others based on you know, considerations of distance or closeness. And then a ground is laid on which you can cultivate a genuine compassion that would um, extend towards all other sentient beings. So the Buddhist teaching on detachment does not imply um, sort of you know, uh, developing some form of uh, disengagement from the world or life or some form of indifference, um, attitude of indifference towards life. ก็สรุปเกะทะเกียรติชื่อนะชื่อเป็นตาตอแซจุกเสร็จเลยกูก็ได้ไปตอบถ้าได้ตอบไปงั้นเนี่ยตอบไปมันได้ตอชื่อช
Um, I think it's important to understand um, uh, in the right context uh, this expression that uh, may I see myself as lower than all others. Um, certainly it's not saying that you should uh, engage yourself in a kind of a um, very um, a kind of thoughts that would lead you to a kind of low self-esteem thinking that uh, losing all sense of hope and feeling dejected thinking that I am the lowest among all lowest among the low um, and feeling that you know I have no I have no no capacity I cannot do anything I have no uh, power and so on and so forth that's not the kind of consideration of lowness that is being re referred to here uh, so it has to be understood in the right context so the the, the reference to low uh, kind of this um, consideration of regarding oneself as lower than others really has to be understood in kind of relative terms for example we can say that uh, generally speaking human beings are uh, at least uh, from the point of view of the fact that we are equipped with uh, the, the sort of uh, the ability to judge between right and wrong and to see long-term futures and so on human beings are superior than animals uh, from that point of view but however one can also sometimes argue that in other respects that human beings can be seen as inferior because for example like if we look at the animal realm uh, of course animal may not have the ability to judge between right and wrong in the in a moral term a moral sense or they may not have the ability to um, see you know uh, uh, sort of long-term consequences of the actions and so on but at least within the animal realm there is a certain uh, sense of order for example like the, um, is if you if you if you uh, look at the African forests, uh, the predators only prey upon uh, the other animals.